I, I want to win to veil my faith. Oh, to win. Oh, so no. Oh, I want to win to veil my feet. I, I want to win to veil my faith. Ah, to win, oh, so do me, oh, me, 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 Jesus, me, me, I want you to meet me in the middle of the air. And if these, these two wings should fail me, I want you to meet me with another pair. Ah, I want two wings to fail my face. I want two wings to fail my face. Oh, two wings, two wings, two wings. So, oh, me, 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 Jesus, me, me. I want you to meet me in the middle of the air. And if these, these two wings should fire me, I want you to meet me with another pair. Yeah, two wings to bear my feet. I want two wings to bear my face. Oh, two wings. Two wings, two wings. So, oh, I want two wings. Uh, I want two wings. Uh, I want two wings. So I'll be able to bear my feet. Oh, I want two wings. Mm -hmm. I want two wings, so I'll be able, I'll be able, I'll be able to bear my face. Oh, fly away, fly away. Lord have mercy. Oh, fly away, fly away. yeah. Oh, fly away, fly away, fly away, fly away. Don't you, don't you wanna fly? 
Certainly the Lord will carry us through. The book is Acts, chapter number is 3. Our focus is verses 6 through, uh, through 10. Third chapter of the book of Acts. Again, reading at verse number 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. The flower fade, the grass certainly withers, but the word of God shall not return on, unto him, him void. I want to tag this text for just a few minutes and talk about the, the day when the church went to church. The day when the church went to church. Thank you, Ashes. You may you may be seated. The church is. designed by God. It is to be the light of the world. The church is to be the salt of the earth. It is the responsibility of the church to preach and to teach Jesus. To lift the Savior up. For he promised in his word, if I and I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And the church was purchased by the precious blood of Jesus when he died on Calvary's cross. He paid the cost for the church with his shed blood. But somehow, men have invaded the church and superimposed upon her their ideology. Men today shop for churches like they shop for shoes. They try to find something to give them a comfortable fit in help in this house. But the church is not designed to always comfort you though it can and will provide comfort in troubled times but the church is designed to cause us to grow up in Christ and to become more and more like Jesus but men have invaded the church and have superimposed upon the church 
their own ideology. So therefore we find ourselves shopping for churches that make us feel good. The danger in shopping for a church that make you feel good is that even the devil quake at the name of Jesus in help in this house. We, we got to have more than just a feeling when it comes down to church. But experiencing God in his fullness can bring about a feeling. But the feeling is secondary to having faith in God. Because some days we have to exercise faith when we don't feel good. And so therefore you don't want to be on an emotional roller coaster. Where you come to church and, and, and you measure whether or not the experience was good. Whether or not you felt good. Sometimes I've come to church and I have not felt that good because... The church lifted Jesus. And when I saw Jesus, I saw myself. Are there any witnesses in here? And when I saw myself, I didn't like what I saw because it wasn't nothing to shout about because I had moved away from God. Do I have a witness here? So every time I darken the doors of the church, it's not about feeling good. It's about exercising faith in God. And, and the danger that happens to us when we shop for churches like we shop for shoes. We find that fit, but that fit is not about faith. Then we find ourselves going to hell on a second class ticket. <clears throat> the church has become soft in her message. Because she's afraid she'll offend. Preachers don't preach about sin and we use alternative words so that we don't offend people because somehow if we offend them they won't come back Jesus said if you're offended by these words I wish I had some help in here there's no sense in you wanting to go to heaven or think about heaven because you've got to understand that sin is sin no matter how you color it it's still sin. No, no matter how you name it, you, you can name it alternative lifestyle. It's still sin. You can call it significant other. It's still sin. You can call it a white lie. It's still sin. Do I have a witness here? You, you, it's sin. No matter how you slice it, it's still sin. And, and the church is, is designed to tell us about a God who can forgive us of our sins. Go and preach, man. And, 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 and what has happened is we we supposed to be telling Jacob of his transgressions and Israel about our sins and we're trying to make friends. Trying to make sure that we don't upset people when we preach and when we teach, but but I come today to tell you that if, if the shoe fit, yeah, we got to somehow wear it. The church has become soft in, in, in that which she does. She locks up in a room and pat each other on the back, tell each other how good we look as being saints and fail to minister to those who have need. Church's attitude is, Benjamin, I got mine, you get yours. And I'm on my way to heaven, I don't have time for you. You, 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 don't, you don't dress right, you don't look right. Uh, uh, you, you don't have nowhere to call home and every time I turn around you have a need but I want you to take a minute and stop and think that somebody pointed you this way you didn't just wake up in the church you didn't just just wake up one day say there was somebody who was concerned 
about your your soul as somebody concerned about some needs you had in your life now all of a sudden because we got a little scripture on our breath and a few pair of garments change the clothes nice little car uh, we lock up in here every Sunday and if anybody come in here we look at them very strangely as if somehow they've invaded our space church has become soft they used to be now and you know they used to then turn into a rooster that won't crow no more it, it, it used to be that when you went to church if you didn't belong somebody greeted you and somebody wanted to know who you were and 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 how you were doing and and folks cared about people you can die be dead six months in heaven with Jesus and folk won't even miss you now church has become soft. I want to look at this because see, just because of this building many are satisfied. Just because of the campus many are satisfied. But can I tell you Jesus is not coming back for brick and mortar. Jesus is not impressed by our sanctuary look. He's looking at our souls. And that look may be a very different look. Because we all can look holy. We all can say, y'all gonna make me do it by myself. We all can say the right stuff at the, the right time. And people can be influenced and Believe that we have it all together. Jesus said, though, no, there's going to come a time when he's going to say to those, depart from me, for I know you not. And they're going to say to him, but Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We've done all kind of ministry in your name. And he's going to say to them, but you are workers of iniquity. You didn't do it because you were saved. You did it to look saved in front of men. I want to tell you, don't waste your time trying to impress me. I'm trying to make it to heaven myself and stay out of hell. You, you, your aim got to be higher than the pastor. Your aim has to be the master. Do I have a witness here? We, we got to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and many times, many times, people want to compare what this church is doing and what that church is doing and who, what preacher can preach best. And God didn't send us here to be competitors. He didn't call me to compete against Pastor Harris. He didn't tell me to out-preach Pastor Marshall. Do I have a witness here? He put uniquely a gift in each one of us that complements one another. And yet somehow we, we like this preacher and don't like that preacher. I think you need to love Jesus. And if you love Jesus, then you got to love all preachers. You can't, you can't say I'm a Paul or I'm a Apollos or I'm a Peter. We got to be of Jesus. And, and, and I figured it'd be just about like this jacket right through here. See, see because the church has to look at, it. are we an organization or are we an organism? See, an organization can be masterfully organized, but it has no life. An organism may not have structure, but if she has the same, she has life. I thought I said something then. And, and the church still today, as I said in the early service, ought to be in the miracle working business. Every now and then, a miracle ought to happen right in this place. We ought to come with some kind of expectation other than sitting on the same row, looking at the back of the same neck, getting out at the same time. And we are suffering because the, the envisionment of who the church is 
and what it's all about has become twisted because men have superimposed their own ideology on what makes a church. The church is a group of baptized, obedient, regenerated believers in Christ Jesus. Whether it's in a parking lot, under a tree, or in a building, that's the church. Have I got one witness in here? It's not about us. It's not about us coming in here and going through the motions. It's about a change happening on the inside. Let's not keep us too long. Look at the text. Look at the text. The man here in the text is paralyzed. He's been paralyzed since he was born. He came in with the problem. He came in a quadriplegic. He, he could not walk. His parents had to carry him everywhere he went. He he graduated from the cradle to the pallet. And now he's been lying on this pallet all, all of this time. He's on this pallet and, and, and he's at the door of the temple. What an indictment. That somebody could be at the door of Union Baptist. And every Sunday, we put something in the cup. And keep it moving. Can I tell you everybody. That's in need. Is not in need of something in the cup. Every now and then. The person needs some conversation. Every now and then. They need to be treated like they're. Humans and not a nuisance. We can't throw clothes at every. Naked person. And solve their problems. The adage of life is. To give a man fish is to feed him for a day. But to teach him how to fish is to feed him for life. To give a naked man some clothes is to clothe him for a day. But to tell him about a savior. Do I have a witness here that can turn his life around is to set him up for eternity. And, and, and so, so it was. The man was in his same place and the same folk passed him every day on their way up to pray and they knew him and he knew them they would come every day for prayer and say they're, they're begging Joe drop something in Joe cup and and he said, there go cheap Larry. I dropped something in the cup and went on the prayer meeting. Prayed about me and my family, but never prayed for the man at, at the door. And this went on and this went on until two broke preachers. They were broke. Sold their fishing business. And followed one who said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but I, the son of man, have nowhere to lay my head. They, they were now disciples of Jesus. And now they come, they come. The first thing I see in the text is I see this man lying in front of a powerless church. Church needs to have power. But now the kind of power you need to have is not transferred from one person to another. Jesus said in Acts 1, go to Jerusalem and stay there until you are endowed with power in helping this house. That power came down from above. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there came a sound as a mighty rushing wind and the Holy Ghost set on each one of them in the room with tongues of clover and tongues of fire and they spake as the Spirit gave them utterance, real power come from above is Holy Ghost power. 
and, and the old church didn't try to operate without the Holy Ghost power but now we've gotten so smart until all we gotta do is get us enough folk on our side get enough folk in our crew get enough folk in our clique and we control what happened in us as church won't you go and preach man and we're wondering why the church isn't growing because we are not offering Jesus and the junk that we want folk to do to get in our clique ain't worth doing to get in because the clique offers no salvation I came prepared to go on down this road by myself and a powerless church the man is laid at the gate of the church and she has programs going on and lives are still pitiful she has a preacher preaching in the pulpit nobody walking the aisle to give their life to Jesus powerless church drive down the street she look good to everybody who's looking at her no power Mm. Mm. powerless church on time for every service people lives are still ragged every time the Lord try to sow seeds somebody come along and say don't listen to the preacher he ain't no good you listen to the doctor he ain't no better But see, we don't want the word to get in the heart because if the word get in the heart, a change takes place. So we've got to discredit the messenger so somehow the message then becomes evil. Powerless church. Everybody else bragging on her and wanting to be a part of her and the truth of the matter is she has no power. Because if she had power, come on, come on. lies would be changed. If she had power, miracles would be taking. Look, look, God didn't stop performing miracles when the Old Testament and New Testament was written. They're still available today. If we get ourselves in the right position, and call on God with the right mindset, he will send down power from above. Do I have a witness here? And, and it don't take a whole lot of us to do it, but a whole lot of us got to have a heart right. It ain't my church, it ain't your church, it ain't our church. If it's a real church, it belongs to God. And it's a privilege and an honor to be saved and a part of. And so he, he, he lies he lies at this church. I don't know when he started going, but he's a regular now. And, 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 and check this out. Check this out. He doesn't crawl over here. He got a drop-off crew. I wish I had five of y'all could look at the text. Isn't it just a shame how folk can just drop you off near him? But never see that you get help. Now, I'm sure whether it was family members or friends, somebody carried him daily. The text said he was laid daily at the temple. Come on, bro. You, you came to the door. How about taking me in? But you can't take me in because you ain't going in. And you don't believe what's in there is worth having. So you drop me off at the door. The children come running in here loose because their parents dropped them off. This ain't no babysitting service. Well, you just drop off your children and go do your thing and then tell them call you in church over. 
powerless church. We come every Sunday, but our homes are in shambles. Our marriages are holding together by threads. Our children are disobedient. There's no love in the house. Come on, come on. There's no power in the church. We sing songs and we make sure they're in key. We don't make sure they have power. Big Mama didn't take no music class. And she didn't know where she was in key, or C, A flat, or D, F. But she said, I know I'm a child of God. Oh, do I move so slow? I wait until the Spirit come and move at God's command. They had power back then. They pitched one of those long meter hymns to charge to keep our half. And a God to glorify, and the hair will stand up on the back of your neck. You'd feel something. We got microphones and ham and organs and samic pianos and drums, and you don't feel nothing. Because everybody just doing what everybody just got to do. It's our Sunday to sing, it's my turn to preach, it's my responsibility to play the instrument. We just come in here and go through motion. Powerless. Church, I know. I heard the thing when he said, How are you going to talk about the day when the church went to church? Because the church needs to come to church. See, there's some stuff ought to happen up in here because of where it is. In the club, some stuff ought to happen in there because of where it's at. <laughs> I, you, <laughs> you don't go to the club to read about horoscopes. You go in the door, hey! Party over here, party over there. Ain't no party like her. Cause it just don't. Stop! You don't go to Jackson State homecoming to sit up in the bleachers like I'm not on the law. You didn't go out to Kansas Stadium, Alexander Stadium, whatever it's called now, and stand in the rain talking about homecoming 2019 and was just standing there. No. It was blue chill up. Holler back if you can. You got ready for that a month ago. And the rain didn't run you off. Don't make me. You come over here. Yeah, time I time I they putting that camera on me. I don't want to be on camera. Well, you on camera here. Yeah. And don't have on as much as you can on thee. I ain't had nobody. I'm just trying to tell you how it really is. We put on our colors for everybody else but Jesus. And we got members of this church that don't come to church, but as soon as something happened to them, they expect us to bail them out. And if we don't, then we ain't right. I mean, come on, talk to me for a minute. You've said to me, you didn't want to hear me preach for 20 years. Then you died, they're going to force you in here on me. Listen, if I hadn't been to the club in 30 years and I died, don't take my body by the club and wake me at the club. Take me where I hung out at. I've told you by my lifestyle what I thought about the church.
They got him to the door and dropped him off. And I'm sure they had a little commission. You know, we drop you off when prayer hour is over. We'll pick you up, get our cut, and we'll take you up there tomorrow. And we'll take you up there the next day, and we'll take you up there the next day. But he ran into two broke preachers. They were broke. But they were hanging out with a broke leader. I wish I had somebody read the word. Foxes have whole birds have nests. Look, Jesus came here borrowing. Left here borrowing. And the Bible says he saw Peter and John going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Who seeing them look on them expecting to receive arms. So you can't throw money at every problem. You got to throw Jesus at some problems. You, you can't solve all problems by just getting a bunch of shoes and giving them to folk. You got to teach them how to walk in Christ. And, and, and so and so here is a man laying in front of a powerless church. But now, can I introduce you to a powerful church? Now, they don't have no deacon. They don't have no preacher. Ain't no choir. Ain't nobody had to do devotion. They just coming. Peter and John. But can I tell you, they've been by Pentecost. They got power. <laughs> and their power that they're working with is not mundane. It's celestial power. It is, watch, it is, watch. The Bible says he looked on Peter and John expecting to receive arms of them. Mm. God Almighty. Could you imagine what the thought was on that man's mind when he heard these words coming out of Peter's mouth? He said, silver and gold have I none. If you don't have no money, don't hold the line up. Keep it moving. Just go on with your broke self. But Peter said, hold on, wait a minute. But such as I have. I need some people in this church that's got some such as I have in your life. There's some stuff in your life that money didn't buy. Come on, talk to me here. There's some stuff in your life that time didn't bring about a change. It was Jesus. He says, such as I have. Anybody walking around with some such as I have in your pocket? We ought to be willing to give it to the world. Stop complaining when people come to you talking about they don't know what they gonna do and you tell my child me neither somebody come to you with a complaint tell them about Jesus who solves all your problems tell them about how you made it over that's your chance to witness not why so many of us miss an opportunity to be a witness because we are ashamed to tell folks how low God had to reach to pick us up you can turn a little halo off and come here. You ain't been holy all your life. No, you've been a wretch undone just like the rest of us. Thank God for grace. And thank him for mercy that he looked beyond our faults and met our every need. So Peter and John Peter said, look man, I ain't always been like this. I was a cusser and a cutter. I wish I had somebody. John said, well, you talk to me. I got a hot temple. I stab you in the back and smile in your face. We ain't always been where we are right now. Do I have anybody here that know God changed you? He rearranged your life and some stuff that you used to do, you don't do as often. I don't want you lying to about you don't do it no more. No, if you don't do it, you should sure think about it. Ah, yeah. I'm going. 
I'm finna quit. Peter says, silver and gold have I. I none. But such as I have. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you what I got. Oh, Lord, have mercy if the church would just give the world what she has. And what do we have? We have the Savior. We have the Savior of the world. We have a God who has all the power in his hand. We have a God who sees all. Who knows all. And who can do anything but fail. And I don't know what it was about Peter. But the Bible said that that man took heed to Peter. You ought to have been there when his hand connected to Peter's hand. The Bible said that uh, Peter told him uh, in the name uh, of Jesus uh, Christ of uh, Nazareth. And he was careful to say in the name of uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth because there were some other men walking around in that day with the name uh, but no power. Do I have a witness? Jesus told the disciple, uh, there will be a day that will come uh, and you'll do greater things than I have done uh, because you don't have power. And all I'm saying to Union Baptist Hill, uh, we need to have uh, that same power moving uh, inside of us. Peter said, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nanaret, uh, rise uh, up and walk. Uh, do you hear me now? Peter says to the man, uh, I want you to do something uh, that you've never done. The man did not know nothing about walking of the call. Uh, he was born uh, lame uh, from his mother's womb. And when we read the rest of the story, he's above 40 years old. Uh, do you hear me? But the Bible said that uh, he listening to Peter. Yes, Lord. Uh, and Peter said, uh, is not in me and it's not in John but it's in the name of Jesus do y'all hear me that is power in that name I wish I had a witness here this morning who didn't mind testifying that you know there's power in the name of Jesus the Bible say Peter reached down the man reached up and the Holy Ghost started moving uh, power left out of Peter and went in the man uh, missing my dear uh, the Bible said uh, those ankle bones uh, that had been mangled from birth uh, those feet uh, that had never been stood on uh, those legs uh, that had never been straightened out uh, the Bible said immediately his ankle bones uh, received strength uh, immediately his feet got light, uh, his leg got straight uh, while holding on uh, to Peter's hand. Uh, the power came down. Uh, send it on down. Uh, let your Holy Ghost uh, fall on down. Uh, let it fall down uh, on me and until uh, they will repent of their sin. Uh, let it fall down uh, upon women uh, and they'll turn uh, to you, Lord. Uh, let it fall down uh, on young people uh, and they can say, I love the Lord. You heard my cry. Is it anybody over here today? Know that the Lord will show it. Send his power down. When that man, I said, when that man felt the 
power he had never felt before. The Bible said he leaping and stood upon his feet. I saw first of all a powerless church, but now I see a powerful church getting ready to go in to a powerless church. Watch this man. The Lord healed his body. He leaping now, y'all, and praising God. Somebody in the room or the catch this one right here. He leaping now and praising God. Somebody in the room or the catch this one here now. You've been down, but God pick you up. You out of the Lord. He turn it to your good. If anybody over here can leap for the Lord, because God, He pick you up, turn you around. What He do? On the dog. Look at the man. He's leaping now and praising God. Every now and then, I need somebody to holler out. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. What the Lord has done for me. I'm done here now. But I need a witness in the house. Is there anybody here today that know the Lord? Brought you a mighty long way, and you're not ashamed to be a witness. Hey! The man said, Can I go inside the church with y'all? I've been lying here all these years, wondering what it's like up in there. But see, when you've been down and the Lord pick you up, you really don't know how to act. You can't be cool and laid back. Didn't nobody tell the man he was supposed to walk in church. He was leaping and jumping and shouting. And praising God. Oh, if I had Father, y'all, in here, who's got a praise in your spirit, when you look back over your life and see what God has done, if you're not ashamed to be a witness, everything good that happened to you, who did it? God! Didn't he do it? Won't he do it? The man was weeping and praising God. The people in the church looked at the man and said, that looks like the man that was at the gate. That looks like the man that I helped at Walmart. That looks like the woman that I gave those shoes to. But he's not acting like the man that was at the gate. Look at him leaping and praising God. Can I get three of y'all in here who ain't too cute to be a winner to come animated with those hands and bless his name. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? The man say, I am a he. Peter say, wait a minute. I don't want y'all to get it twisted. It was not me. It was not John. But it was that same Jesus. Oh, that y'all crucified. That God raised from the dead. It's by his name. The man is healed. Union Baptist. We need to lift up the name of Jesus. Till the power come down. Won't he do it? And he sent it down. Anybody in the room ever been in his presence and he laid his hand on you? You were crying and was nothing wrong. Felt like running and wasn't nobody behind you. It's power. Anybody got that power? Don't play with me here now. But I'm talking about that Holy Ghost power. If you know God is real, let me hear you say, Yeah. 